my kitchen He was trying to talk me out of work And into going fishing Then he wiggled his nose And we were up in a tree stand A ten point buck in front of me And a rifle in my hand And I said, Mike, are you some kind of Cajun Santa? He said, no, son, you're just dreaming That you've died and gone to Louisiana I'm Jody Dunmore. I'm with Mike Lane. We're on an interstate right now. We're heading to Lake Charles, Louisiana. We're going with Captain Renee Dandry in Lake Charles, Louisiana. We're going to do a little duck hunting, a little goose hunting, and some fishing. And you know what? I'm, no pressure on me today. I'm not the guide. I'm just going for the ride. This is just the beginning. We're on the road right now. we got about two more hours to go. And, uh, we're gonna go up tonight. I brought some deer sausage. I killed uh, three deer this past week. Made some deer sausage out of them, and we're gonna have a little deer sausage tonight for dinner, and uh, we'll shoot some ducks tomorrow, catch some fish, and y'all stay with us. It's gonna be a great show. Jody, you know at that sunrise, you can't beat it. I mean, the best office view you could ask for. Out here in the marsh, I mean, it's, it's the best you can get. Welcome to this week's edition of Sportsman's Paradise TV. I'm here with Mike Lane, and we're out here in Big Pasture Marsh, south of Lake Charles, with Rachel Young and Jody Dunwar, and we are duck hunting. We're gonna try and kill us a few ducks. It's about 60 degrees, light wind out of the northeast. We just had some mergansers come in and a couple of teal. Didn't get a shot, but uh, hopefully we'll be back. different calls um, and you just got a general quack just <laughs> and then a call ca called a uh, contented hen which is more like a hen sitting on the water and if there's birds flying by um, just trying to get their attention saying hey come sit by me and it it's kind of a three note when I try to teach people how to call I tell them it sounds like three blind mice <laughs> and then um, what we usually do when the birds are going away, we'll hit them with a comeback call, and it's a little more urgent. It's about five or six notes. <laughs> and that's just to get them to turn, and then we'll work them back in with a, uh, with a uh, greeting call. It's like a slower pace comeback. Um, hit them with a lonesome hen, and then a feed call. <laughs> When they're eating, they make that kind of noise? When they're eating, they make that kind of noise. They're, it's more of a... And when mallards are flying, you'll hear them a lot of times, they'll have rice in their, in their crop, and they'll... That's more of a rolling feed call, and that's what a lot of guys up in Arkansas do. Down here, it's more just a little chatter. She's quacking on something. Right above us, right above us. Oh, told her too far. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, a sky buster. A sky buster. Man, if those came over here, they're flying low too. Opening weekend, you know, we shot limits both days and um, other than that, I mean, it's been hit or miss, but I mean, we haven't scratched yet. Um, some days it takes a little while to get a few birds in the blind. Um, 
It's just, it's been tough. And the thing is over here, you know, you get a good north wind and it pushes a lot of birds further south to Cameron, Holly Beach, and then you get a good south wind, blows them back up north. And it, they just go in between here and uh, in the rice fields. It, it's just, it's hit or miss lately. But I mean, the past week I've been in Arkansas, I don't really know what they've been, right. what they've been doing. I mean, they're, they're, the hunting hasn't been that great, but they're still managing to kill a few birds. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Good yeah. shot. Ah. I think it's model duck. Yeah, that's model duck. Model duck Drake. Is that a good one? Yes, sir. <laughs> Another duck just landed in front of us out there. What's that now, Mike? She responds to the whistle. I'm starting her on hand signals. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Heal up. Matt, heal. Heal. All right. Jody, is that awesome. the first duck? Uh, first one this morning. <laughs> hey. Come over here. Beautiful model duck drake. Uh, these stay here pretty much the whole year. They look similar to a black duck. But this is our local, our local bird. Good girl, Maddie. Okay, you folks at home, uh, Captain Renee Dandrew just called this beautiful duck in for me and I, I made a nice shot on it. And uh, it's a real pretty bird. It's the first one I've killed in a long, long time. I hadn't been duck hunting in a long time. And uh, just want to tell you guys at home, you want to come out here and make a great hunt or a fishing trip, call Captain Renee Dandry out here in Lake Charles. And by the way, this segment is brought to you by Raw Purple, the performance oil that outperforms. One of my friends has a camp up in, in Woodville, Mississippi, and we're up there planting food plots all weekend, and um, we decided to go ride around, maybe look for a couple hogs or so. And your friend's a girl, right? Yeah, her okay. name's Deanne. There you go. And we're uh, up there looking around. We're gonna go check out, we go check out a couple, and we don't see nothing, but we, uh, we come up on a couple, we're walking up to, uh, we're gonna sit on the edge of a food plot that uh, hadn't been pl planted are. yet this season, and there are a couple out there, so I go prop up in a tree, and uh, I shoot one of them, he's about 60, 70 pounds or so, and um, he's making this god-awful squealing noise, and she hands me the knife, she goes, okay, you gotta go slit its throat now, and so she, I, we run across the field, and I have to step on its face and slit its throat, and it finally quits hollering and stuff like that. And okay, guys, a rush. this is Rachel. Don't piss her off, she'll step on your head. <laughs> there you go, she'll step on your head, Might baby. slit your throat, too. Uh oh my God. Well, that's a true hunting story for Rachel. <laughs> Go. We got the Drake. Back. Well, I suck too lucky, bro. I got that first one, the first shot. Man. Greenhead. Deadly <laughs> Jody. Good shot, Jody. Thank you, man. That was a kick. That was, that was fun. Maddie, here. Nope. Over here. No. Come on. No. No. Sit. Stop. Cool. That is a fat, fat green head. Wow. That's what it's all about. Big old green head, South Louisiana. And if you want a bird for the wall, I mean, that's that's a fat green head. Yeah, I haven't done much duck hunting. This is beautiful. Captain Renee called him right on. <laughs> In fact, if you saw, there was three of them over us, and uh, I dropped this one the first shot, and kind of hesitated watching this one fall away too long, so I shot the next two shots, and, those two birds got away from us, but uh, this is great. You got the one that counts. Keeping it real, right here on rodreel.com, Mike Lane, Sportsman's Paradise TV.
when you're calling birds like that, Jody, when they're coming across and you're making different calls, you watch them fly. I mean, if you're doing a lonesome hen or just a certain call, you see how they react. And we call it calling it uh, wingtips and, and tails. And when they're flying across, if you see their belly and they might be going away, you hit them with something and you see them turn, that's what they're reacting to. They're reacting to that call. So what you want to do is kind of keep it consistent. And I was noticing when I was hitting that real quick comeback, they were turning to it, they were reacting to it. And that's when we got them, you know, coming right at us. And when they're locked up and coming, you kind of just quit calling, do some subtle stuff. There's no reason to ruin a good thing. Right. Um, and if they change, if they bank off, hit them again with that comeback, and they'll usually turn back. Wow. So Very good we got them in, though. Well, good call. <laughs> Great job. Yeah, Renee, that was, that was really impressive. I mean, those three ducks was on the other side of the pond and passed us by, and you just was aggressive calling them, calling them, calling them. Pass us by and almost way away from us, and you turned them and brought them right on back into us, and just real impressive calling. Great job calling, man! It was incredible. Thank you, hey guys. We're going to show y'all how we uh, built these blinds. As you can see, this blind looks like an island. Um, this is actually man-made. It's uh, in a rectangle shape. We've got a uh, framed-up, you know, posts on the outside with boards, and um, inside we use uh, square bales of hay. And for this particular blind, we use about 40 to 50 square bales, and that creates our bottom. And then what we do is dig grass clumps, similar to this, and this is natural grass out of the marsh the surrounding, in the surrounding area, and put it on top of those square bales. And um, it usually takes about seven or eight boatloads, I mean, with two guys, a good full day, 12-hour day work to uh, dig these grass, grass clumps. And then with our panels is what we use in between each blind on the front and back. It's made out of wood. Got some uh, chicken panel. Take one out and show me how you tape it on. And what we do is we'll go out and get a hedge trimmer and grab big clumps and cut them. Put them in five, fill five gallon buckets up with them. And we'll take small little bundles like this, wrap them with electrical tape, and weave them in and out of the panel. And with these fiberglass pits, put it behind it. And that's what the hole looks like from up top covers up real well, it looks natural, and uh, you'll see a little later when we get in the boat, you'll see from the outside that uh, it looks pretty much like the rest of the area. It doesn't stick out, it uh, doesn't have any unnatural cover on it, and the ducks like it. There's the killer. Go. I want to thank Renee Dandry who is a champion duck caller. It was a pleasure listening to him call ducks. We enjoyed Rachel's personality and her pretty smile. And of course, we had the fabulous, the wonderful Jody Dunmore along for the ride. So we had a great time.